Hello and welcome to everyone who is watching the Written and Melanin channel. Wherever this day may have found you, I'm so glad that you are here. My name is Chelsea and I am here with Joya Goffney. And if you have not heard of her by now, you must be living under a rock because she is the author of Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry. It is one of the most anticipated books of the year and I have had the lovely fortune of reading an advanced copy of it. And today we are going to be talking about it and getting into it. So that being said, shop in, buckle up, like this video because it's absolutely free and you're going to want to stay for this whole conversation. And yeah, that's it. This is a behind the cover interview, you guys, which means I read the book. She clearly wrote the book. So there may be light spoilers for this. So go into this conversation being warned if you have not read it already. I will do my best to warn you, but in case I don't, you've been warned in the beginning. So there you go. All right. <laughs> So, first of all, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. I can't tell you how excited I am to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. This is so exciting. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, before we get into all the questions that I have for you, for the people who have not been able to grab a copy and read the book, can you give us a little bit about what it's about, like your elevator pitch for it? Yes, yeah, so Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry is about a compulsive list maker named Quinn Jackson who has a list journal that might look a little something like this um, <laughs> full of all of her lists <laughs> and um, it goes missing and it ends up in the hands of a blackmailer who blackmails her into doing a, a to-do list of all of her greatest fears. Uh, so she teams up with Carter Bennett who's like the last person who she knows had her journal mm -hmm. and they go through all of her fears and they search for the blackmailer and it's just a lovely book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that being said, I have to say that one of my favorite parts of this book, and I wrote a review about it on the Melanin Library. So if you're watching this, if you haven't checked out the Melanin Library, go check it out. It's a database of black authors and Joya Gaffney's book is on there. So be sure to check that out as well as a book review. So <laughs> little, little ad lib right there, but <laughs> One of the things I loved about your book is that Quinn is like anxious and she writes these lists and I'm not a list writer, but I like the way she was just like, okay, this helps center me. Like, I don't have to keep the emotions inside if I write them down. I was like, oh, that's so relatable. Thank you for writing such a relatable black girl. Like, yes. Homegirl's yes. like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do with these feelings? I don't know. I'm going to write them down and we'll see what, what happens. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't really do that myself, or at list, mm -hmm. but I, I do, like, journal a lot. Okay, so, and I'm not a, I'm not a list maker either, but I am more of a, huh, I'm more of a, like, a creative writer, so, I'll, like, I'll throw somebody else in the situation with my feelings and be like, oh, okay, that works. They get to deal with it, not me. That works. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but that being said, I follow you on Instagram, right? So, I know that this book kind of sparked from a list that you made a while back. So can you tell us a little bit more about that and the inspiration behind Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry? Yeah, so um, when I was in high school, I would write like a single list per year of mm -hmm. like social things that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it would usually be like little silly things like go a whole day singing or go a day a whole day not talking or hug a random boy, mm -hmm. eat a cricket, something crazy like that. <laughs> um, but my senior year, I decided to take it a little bit more seriously. Mm -hmm. And I um, added items like get my first kiss and mm -hmm. um, find a new group of friends, mm -hmm. which is kind of hard in a small town. You know, there's like 50 people you can talk to. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that year I had these serious things that I wanted to do and it was, it was really difficult for me but there was also this boy mm -hmm. who at the time was kind of my um, rival mm -hmm. and um, yeah we kind of hated each other <laughs> <laughs> I love how you said but, that <laughs> but, <laughs> but we were also very similar mm -hmm. we were like the only two black kids who were like really nerdy and mm -hmm. often called Oreos so I knew that I could trust him because he understood where I was coming from. He understood my situation. So I took my list to him 
Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I took it to him and he was the first person I told about all of my feelings for my current friends and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, he, he kept those secrets for me and, and we went through my fears and, um, he became one of the friends that I made and also eventually became a boyfriend and now we're still together like nine years later. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome! I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so that that's the inspiration behind it. Okay, so I know that we're here to talk about Excuse me while we cry, but that was like the cutest story that I've ever heard and I appreciate you for sharing that because I was just like, oh, that's so cute. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> but that being said, I was kind of surprised when I was reading it because first of all, I loved Carter. I loved Carter. I loved Quinn. I loved all of their moments together. And I want to say that you did a spot on job of like writing their interactions, like especially like they're like when they're texting each other, when they're calling each other, like. I was just like, oh, this takes me back. This is good feelings. Good mm. feelings. This is so yes. cute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like, I I could probably sing your praises all day because I remember, like, when I was reading it, my husband was looking at me because I was just like, oh, like ah! and I was making, like, sounds, and he was just like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, it's just so cute. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, so for those of you who are watching this in the future, right, please understand that Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry is a rom-com, so when you pick it up, please be prepared to laugh out loud and make faces and be like, yeah. because it's it's that kind of story. Like, you're this is not a stone face, I'm just going to read this quietly and mind my business kind of story. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, like, the humor, right? Like, oh, okay spot on but also one of my favorite moments in the book and this is slight spoiler so um if you don't want to know what happens later on in the book you can skip over this little part right but there's a moment where olivia is like with quinn and it's toward the end and she's like you're gonna be gabrielle union and i'm gonna be the girl who's like she's like she doesn't even know her name and what i love is that we collectively do not know this girl's name from the movie <laughs> No. Nobody knows I her know. name. <laughs> I was like, you know, maybe I should look it up and put it in there, but who knows this girl's name? <laughs> but immediately, but I also love how nobody remembers what Gabrielle Union's name was in the movie either. She was Gabrielle Union. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. I was just like, this. if this is not spot on culture, like, yeah, okay, you're going to be the nice one and I'm going to be the one ready to fight, okay? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so I just I loved every moment of this of this book. I'm not even gonna lie. So if you hear me say that I loved it and I love this and I love that, I genuinely did. Okay. But that moment I remember I died. I think I tweeted you too, and I was like, this is what I came for. This is oh, what yeah, I, I came for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I <remember> so <laughs> but they go and they they confront Destiny and Gia and they, you know, get the journal back and all this stuff. But what I wanted to know, I have questions about Destiny, right? Before we get into, because I feel like once I start talking about Carter and Olivia and Auden, I'm going to go like down a rabbit hole and we're never going to get to these other questions. So let's just start with the end, right? <laughs> um, with Destiny, like, I guess kind of with everybody, it was like, what was her character? What was the inspiration for her character? Right. But then also I know that Destiny doesn't really see herself as being racist. She says as much towards the end, right? So how was, how, was, how was their relationship working out? What was it like writing their, the, I'll say, ups and downs of Quinn and Destiny's relationship? Um, well, I, in the beginning of writing this book, um, Destiny was kind of a throwaway character. Mm -hmm. um, she was kind of, she was alone really she didn't have Gia it was just destiny mm. um she was the entire villain and she didn't have any um what's the word um she she wasn't forgivable in any sense like um but I decided I mean there's like this I decided that there's like there's two levels to this or not just two but mm -hmm. I have two levels here we have Gia and she's just like unforgivable she's she yeah doesn't care 
Um, and then you have Destiny who tries or she wants to try, but she's just ignorant. Mm -hmm. And um, and her ignorance, it, it hurts Quinn. It ends up hurting Quinn. And um, it's not a good excuse, really, yeah. for her racism. But I guess the inspiration behind that was definitely things that I went through in high school. Um, when I was in high school, I didn't, I didn't really realize um, how much it hurt me and that maybe I should say something and that I probably shouldn't stand for this. And that one like iconic line that you might can pick out um, the whole um, Quinn is practically white anyway, that line, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's real. It happened yeah. and it, it hurt me and it stuck with me. Um, and at the time I didn't really say much. I did say something, which I am proud of myself back then for saying something, but it wasn't what Quinn said. And I'm proud of Quinn for the way that she handled that at the end, mm -hmm. um, for standing up for herself. And I guess that's how I wish I would have handled that. Okay. Yeah. And, Cause I remember reading it. And part of the reason I say that your book is so relatable is because I, I was also one of those like nerdy black girls who was just like, especially when I was younger, where it's just like, oh, well, you're kind of like an Oreo, right? Like, you, like, yeah, you're black, but also like, not really. And it was just kind of like, that's really not a compliment, you guys. Yeah. I don't know how I'm supposed to like, respond to that. Like, why? first of all, why does it have to be food? I'm confused. I'm not an item to be like, bought in a grocery store. That's weird. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> but then also, it's just like the complete dismissing of that part of your identity. It's just like, oh, okay, that's just like hella rude, but we're just going to roll with it because like also I'm like 13, 14. I don't know how to deal with this. Right? Exactly. So I I like that. And like you said, I'm also really glad that Quinn addressed Destiny at the end and was like, this is the problem. The fact that you, you know, because I think uh, if I remember right, Destiny was like, uh, I've always I've never seen you as black like you were just my friend like I tried to look past that like that was yeah. like, the right thing to do and Des and Quinn was like yeah no that's not what I want you to do like I want you to recognize that I am black and that even though we are different it's there's nothing wrong with being different but also that difference still exists exactly right? um which kind of made me wonder do you think that Quinn and Destiny will ever get be friends again like that they'll work their relationships out or that destiny will actually be a decent ally in the future um no i mean if we're being realistic i yeah. think they're about to go off to college and it's probably more work than destiny wants to put in to mm -hmm. that she just doesn't want to be seen as racist no one wants to be called racist right right and so she'll she'll probably try to talk to Quinn, and Quinn might try, but I mean it's a lot of energy for. Yeah. I don't think. I'm no, sorry. I'm sorry, but I don't think. No, no. I mean, there's no <laughs> wrong answer. I was just, I was just wondering because I know at the end that was kind of like one of those open-ended things where it's just like Destiny was like, hey, you know, I'll call you, and Quinn's like, mm, you know what, maybe we'll just talk later or yeah. whatever. And it's always interesting when people try to not completely burn a bridge that's kind of already in ashes mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting right so i was yeah. just wondering what your take on it was but that being said um that also brings me to like i said the other characters in the book like matt and carter and olivia and auden and we'll start with matt right so for those of you who have not read the book slight spoiler Matt is the boy that it lives next door that Quinn has a major crush on and has had a crush on for a very long time. At least that's what I got. I'm not making that up, right? No, you're right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, what? But what I was, what I noticed is that like we know that Quinn has a crush on Matt, but we're never sure as as to why, other than like she likes the way that he looks, right? And they're friends. So, is there a reason why Quinn? likes Matt like can we know a little bit more about what that where that stems from or is that just kind of like you're my neighbor and my friend and you've always kind of been around and you're kind of hot too kind of that yeah <laughs> I would say that I mean in high school oh, I didn't have a reason to like a person I really <laughs> didn't you know you're cute and you talk to me like <laughs> I understand <laughs> 
like you're nice That's to look all. at. Yeah, you're sweet to me, so let's let's do this. But <laughs> okay, it's funny, yeah. I was and I was curious because I was like I was thinking like part of Quinn's issue is that she never tells Matt how she feels, right? And so I was wondering, I was like, do you think things in the story would have gone a little bit different if she had been a little bit more upfront about how she feels about him? Instead of like, just kind of not, she didn't go off the rails because he liked Destiny, right? But do you think things would have been different if she had just like straight up told him like, hey, I like you and had actually been a little bit more active in that instead of just waiting for him to come around? If things would be different, like, in terms of, uh, in, in like, the end of the book, or like, if anything would have happened with Carter, just like if anything would have happened with would've... Carter, if okay. if he had been aware, because like he really doesn't know that Quinn yeah, likes him ever. He doesn't ever get yeah. Um, I think maybe, but maybe not. I think that if she had told Matt how she felt, I think he would have been really awkward about it. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I think that he like. I think he knew that she kind of, mm -hmm. but I think he liked her liking him. Mm. Uh, that's and, a vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than wanting to be with her, because otherwise, I mean, he would have probably made a move. But I think he just liked having her crush on him. So if she told him, that probably would have made things really awkward. And I mean, Carter would have come in and maybe he would have gotten a little jealous, but I don't mm -hmm. think it would have changed too much. Gotcha. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just one of those people where I'm just like, but what if she had told him? But what if he had known? Would they have? Would that have changed anything? That's just kind of where my brain goes. So I'm just kind of yeah. like. <laughs> but honestly, I'm glad that it worked out the way it did because Carter is my favorite, and I just okay. So I liked that he was like, okay, there's so many different parts of Carter that I like. They're not necessarily linear, if that makes sense to the storyline. But I'm gonna try and stick to the questions that I actually wrote down for you so that I don't go down, down a rabbit hole. <laughs> okay, so we talked about Destiny and we talked about Matt, but as far as Quinn, Carter, and Olivia goes, do you have a favorite and are they based on real people? Um, my favorite is Carter. Olivia, Olivia she's like a close second. Mm -hmm. um, Carter, his personality isn't really based on anyone. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I guess just their situation is based on me and my mm -hmm. boyfriend, but his personality is not quite based on my boyfriend. Um, he just came to me. I don't know. He just came to me. Quinn is a little bit on me, based on me, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then Olivia, no, she's just this girl I wish existed for me, you know? I wish I had an Olivia in real life. She's just like an amazing friend. <laughs> That's what, I <clears throat> oh, sorry. That's honestly what I thought when I was reading. I was like, I wish I had friends like Olivia and Carter because they're so down for Quinn. And I'm not gonna lie, there is a part in the book and this is light spoiler, I guess, I don't know. At this point, you guys, it's spoilers, okay? <laughs> I'm trying my best here. But <laughs> towards the end where um, Olivia and Carter find out, like, for, not Olivia. Olivia, yes, I'm miss missing up names. Good God. Okay. <laughs> Olivia and Carter find out that, you know, Quinn was involved with the whole, you know, shenanigans, yes. I'll say. And... I really liked because at that point in the book, I'm not even gonna lie, I was like, okay, so we have two options. Either this is gonna go like traditional YA and they're not gonna talk to her, she's gonna have to fix it, or it's gonna go somewhere different. And you went somewhere different with it and I was just like, thank you so much for like letting her friends be her friends. And even though like, it was like, yeah, you did this, but that was a while ago and I'm over it. So mm -hmm. it sucks, thank you for telling me, but also moved on past that, great. Glad we got to have this discussion. 
Yeah. Like, and she's given this opportunity to come clean and to um, apologize and tell, like, where she was coming from and why she was even there. Yeah. I think that was important. Yeah. And I feel like it showed how different, like, Destiny and Gia were compared to Olivia and Carter. Because Destiny and Gia turned on her, like, the minute they had the chance. Mm -hmm. And Olivia and Carter were there, like, down for her. All the way down to the end, like, okay, fine. Like, even though yeah. you did this thing to me, I'm still not going to, like, stop being your friend because of it, you know? And I just, I love that so much <laughs> because we need real friends. And I feel like Quinn really needed real friends yeah. in her life and not just people who were, who were there. And also, Gia said some stuff that had me, like, ready to fight. I didn't even I know. <laughs> I've heard that. People really want to fight Gia. <laughs> like... I, and I'm one of those people where it's like, I try to let things go, but there is a moment where they're getting like straight, straightening their hair. And, you know, they were always pressuring Quinn to straighten her hair. She was like, no, 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 no. And then she finally goes like, it's like, okay, yeah, let's do it. Like, can you guys help me with this? And then she's like, oh, well, this is a new hair iron and your hair is greasy. Like you could just wash it. Like, baby, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Yeah. That had me I ready mean, to jump in the book. I didn't want to lie. There was this one time that those words weren't said to me, but um, I did make the mistake one time of asking a group of white girls to do my hair. And it was just really like awkward. And I was like, why did I do that? It was so dumb. I don't know. It was hindsight is 2020. Mm -hmm. Like maybe shouldn't have done that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But that being said, um, kind of moving on. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop singing your praises at some point, actually ask you questions. But I really loved Olivia. And so one of my favorite moments is when they're going out to experience, you know, the nightlife. And first of all, I loved how you described all of them getting dressed up. And I love their reactions to each other. Like, like Quinn is like, that old snap i didn't know auden could actually get dressed up but then she sees carter and she's just like oh my god drool right yeah <laughs> and i have it highlighted too in my kindle where there's just, or maybe it wasn't even that interaction i don't know i love carter carter has all these little smooth comebacks for everything quinn says at him says to him but point staying on track staying on track while they're out, one of the things that I really liked about Olivia's character is like she's there with Auden, but she's still like her her ex comes up and she's still like mm, peace out, right? Mm -hmm. And I just it's like a real thing, right? Because it's just like she likes Auden, but Auden is also like really shy and like kind of not making a move on her. And then she's like, oh, okay, hey, how you doing? And then yeah. he's like, let's go up to the front. And she's like, okay, bet. And then she's like, okay, yeah. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Peace, yes. <laughs> and I love how Carter's like, hey, man, do something. Do something. I'm just like, what do you want me to do? And then it's too late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I guess, how was it writing that? Like, did you ever find yourself just like laughing while you were writing this? Or just being like, you know what? Go ahead, Olivia. I see you. I understand this is a bad decision, but living your moment, girl. <laughs> <laughs> that scene was so fun to write. Particularly, I, I like the part where um, they're getting drinks and, and Carter's like not taking a shot and she's like, go take a shot. It would be so hot. Mm -hmm. And she's like, okay, let me go and try to <laughs> do this sexy thing. And no, it just falls flat and she's like why and it's so <laughs> awkward i love it <laughs> i just like her awkwardness is spot on and i love it i lived for it the entire time i was just like you're trying baby it's okay it's okay <laughs> that's what matters yeah. and then she's like sloppy drunk and then she's like with him and then she's like and he's like, oh, you're about to puke. Let me get out the way. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there is no graceful way to toss your guts in front of a guy you like. None. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. So, 
I know you said you had fun writing that scene. Was that your favorite scene to write, or do you what like what was your favorite scene in the book to read and once you wrote it and then to like write? Period. The um, late night conversation, the first one, um, when he's like, "Tell me about destiny." Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's that scene is just I can read that over and over. It is so cute and funny and yeah. raunchy and <laughs> deep. <laughs> I love that scene. Honestly, I loved all of their phone call scenes because I was just like, it's so honest. Like, yes, this is what they do. Like, you lay in bed and you talk and you talk about nothing and then you talk about everything and then you go back to talking about nothing and it's perfect. And then she's like, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. And then like, you're, ugh, this is perfect. Yeah. So perfect. And then Carter being nosy, like, hey, so what are you wearing? And she's like, yeah. hey, mind your business, homie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And the ending to that scene is just yeah if you haven't read it i suggest you read it because it's a little <laughs> anime blush okay <laughs> oh gosh um okay so that being said that was your since that was your favorite scene to write and we kind of are jumping all around the book at this point but if you could have anyone pick up the pick up the book and have anything know anything about the book I cannot ask you questions. I'm so sorry. I'm it's so fine. sorry. It's fine. <laughs> it's Wednesday. <laughs> it's Wednesday and my words don't know how to word anymore. Um, <laughs> let's try this one more time. If you could have someone pick up the book and know anything about it, what would it be? There we go. That, yes, it's a rom-com, but we also deal with a lot of um, serious issues too. And while it will make you smile and blush and laugh, it might also make you cry. <laughs> and think. And think, yes. <laughs> okay, for sure. So that being said, uh, one of the topics that you bring up in the book is just, you know, obviously, you know, racism and what it means. Because one of the things that I liked about Quinn that I feel like sometimes isn't touched on, especially in like lighthearted YA, is that Quinn knows that she is black and she's not ashamed of that fact. She's just got, she goes to a very white school with with white friends. And you know, when you're in high school, you kind of have to survive. <laughs> so you can only be the, I don't wanna say problematic one, but the one who like is educating people so often before you're like labeled the other. And that, I feel like a clear example, that's kind of like Olivia. Like, mm -hmm. she doesn't take any of that, and they kind of see her as, oh, there's Quinn, but then there's, like, Olivia. And even though Olivia's, like, half white, they're, like, but they're completely different, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how their school sees them. So, and part of Quinn's upbringing is due to her parents and her dad. So, what was it like writing them? Because, you know, how Quinn sees her dad is not being comfortable in his own skin and her embracing her own Skin. like what was that like switching between those two it was I don't know um with her dad it's like okay it's like what he says he says that um being conscious is an effort even for black people mm -hmm. and um he hasn't been conscious for a while or he hasn't been trying for a while and like all of he he only surrounds himself with white people so it kind of it's kind of like that um i don't know it's like quinn is trying to break out of that and and discover her black self and and um make these black friends while her dad has kind of sunken in on the reality or his you know his white world so I don't know it was necessary to kind of show those two different stages I guess mm -hmm. I can see that because I feel <clears throat> like her dad was I don't know not necessarily like a warning sign but kind of like what happens when you like you said or like whether he said he said in the book like when you no longer are surrounded by those black friends who are there to kind of like check you and hold you accountable and be like hey and just i guess keep you grounded and down to yeah earth. you know so 
I don't know. I just, I, I enjoyed reading that. And I enjoyed the fact that you decided to include the fact that, well, yes, he's fully aware that he is a black man and living in a very white America, I'll say. And he's trying to raise his daughter to be like, okay, you have to try twice as hard. But he's also like, <clears throat> one thing that I also enjoyed is that he also is like spoiling his daughter to the point of like, are you serious, man? <laughs> like she drives a Mercedes and he's like getting, her, talking about getting her an apartment in New York. <laughs> like, okay, wait a second. And then I also love how her mom is kind of like, why does she need an apartment? Like, I don't understand why she's driving Mercedes. Why can't she drive a yeah. Honda like everybody else? I had a yeah. Honda and it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it shows they're, they're two different backgrounds. Like, she, she grew up, you know, struggling, and he kind of had it a little easier. Yeah. <clears throat> but I enjoyed seeing that Quinn had two parents, like, who were, even though they they had their issues, right? But they were still together, and they both loved her very much. And I feel like it's so rare to see stories like that, for whatever reason. Like, you have a dark-skinned black girl with two holy black parents who love her, and spoil her so like thank you for writing that and including that i just so appreciated that so yeah. much um but again not here to just sing your praises <laughs> um <laughs> so a couple other things that i wanted to ask you um specifically about what's coming up next for you um do you have any other books in the works and i know that at the end of this book carter mentioned Quinn helping her, him with his own list. Do we have more Carter and Quinn coming or no? Nah, it's okay. <laughs> um, no, okay. not yet. At least. I mean, uh, I am working on a book, mm -hmm. but it's not a sequel. Um, it's yeah, completely different. Um, but I have gotten a lot of requests for, for a Carter story. And it's just making me think, you know, maybe <laughs> <laughs> I would read it. I would a hundred percent read it. <laughs> maybe, but, um, no, the, the next book is completely independent of that. It's, um, it's about a girl. Um, it's about sex positivity, mm -hmm. body positivity, um, sex education, but I can't really say much about it. I'm, I'm working on it right now. <laughs> Got to. Well, it doesn't matter what it's about. I'm going to read it because I love your first book so much. So. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm trying to think, are there any more questions that I have to absolutely ask you so that this interview doesn't go too, too long? Um, oh, something that I did want to ask you that's kind of a projection of my own feelings. So apologies in advance. Um, like, okay, so throughout the book, Quinn's focused on what college she's going to be going to, right? And mostly that, you know, she's not going to Columbia. <clears throat> but, um, even as she's visiting other colleges and then, you know, she finally gets around to, you know, revealing her truth and figuring out where she's actually going. Um, she never actually picks a major or anything that she wants to study. She's just like, I just have to go. Like, what are you going to do when she get there? So... I guess that's my question. Like, do you have like a guess at what Quinn would major at, or are you just leaving it um, open? She would go as undecided. Um, but what she, if I had to guess what she would eventually pick? Probably something to do with like journalism. Mm -hmm. um, she could be a really good BuzzFeed writer, <laughs> <laughs> like a list maker. <laughs> For sure. I could definitely see that being her niche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think that her and Carter and Olivia would stay friends or her and Carter together? Or do you think they would kind of like drift? I think they would stay together. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank God. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <It was cold. laughs> yes. I think they would yeah. stay together. Okay. <clears throat> because like I said, I love seeing them together and it was just like, it's just, oh. I love, okay. I want to keep saying, I'm not going to, whatever. I love that they kept, that Carter kept trying, that he realized that he was wrong for what he did and that he wasn't just like, okay, it'll work itself out. 
like even when he was in the quote unquote doghouse, he was just like, N but no, like I actually genuinely care about you. So I'm going to continue trying and make this right and not just like ignore you until it gets better. Yeah. Or until you come around. I feel like, because I feel like that's so unhealthy. Like, no, you gotta keep trying, baby. You gotta keep trying. And yeah. I was like, yes. Show me your, how much you care. Right. Like, don't just, don't just brush it off. Right. Yeah. Um, but that being said, was that, okay. I feel like my thoughts make sense in my head, but I'm not voicing all of them. So I apologize if I'm saying like, okay, this leads you, leads me to my next thought. I swear it does, but <laughs> I digress. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay. So what was like the most rewarding part of writing the book for you? Um, and it doesn't have to be like an actual scene or anything. It could just be like when you finished or when it came to reality, but like which part of putting together the book was the most rewarding y'all think? I think... So, okay. I think the most rewarding part was when I got the first scene down. Mm -hmm. The first scene, for some reason, is always so hard for me. Because you have to introduce everything, you know, all of the characters, all of the situations that are going wrong, and, or that might go wrong. And I struggled with the first scene so much. It changed a lot. Um, but once I realized how to do it, I was like, okay, here we go. This is good. <laughs> this will work. I think, yeah. That I, I felt really good after that. Okay. So, I'm always curious because, you know, with writers versus creatives in general, it's always like everybody has their own little, I'll say, stumbling block that they have mm -hmm. to get past. They're always just like, yes, okay, I got it. I like Whether it's starting it or finishing it or getting it to the middle or just being like, you know what, it's out in the world. So, I'm always curious because people are always, you know, saying different things, right? So, yeah. I'm glad that you got the first scene down too, because honestly, I loved it because it starts with Quinn just ogling Carter with no abandon. <laughs> yeah. Just staring. Just staring like, oh my God, do you know how handsome you are? Like I could just look at him all day. And then he comes out the side of his mouth with like some really annoying stuff. She's like, mm, scratch that. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. But I also love the references to Fresh Prince, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So I love all the references, like again, spot on, spot on. So if you haven't read this book, there are tons of references in here and you're going to love them. So if you haven't read this book, this is a shameless plug. Go buy the book, read the book, enjoy the book, rave about the book, tell other people to read the book, go buy it for a friend, okay? Yeah. There's no way that you can do bad by investing in this book at all. Okay, just buy it and look at the cover, okay? It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I have two more questions for you. And then we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, and they're kind of in the same vein, but they are two different questions. Um, the first one is um, written in melanin. Are like this channel is for um, geared towards black writers and authors, but authors of, and writers of all types, right? Self-published, traditional published, indie published, whatever you're trying to do, right? So since you have been through this process of publishing your book, do you, do you have any advice for anyone who would want to pursue traditional publishing? Um, the first piece of advice that I always give anyone who says they want to write a book or publish a book is to read. Um, yeah, I mean, um, to read in your genre, to read what has been coming out recently to know like what is selling on the market. Um, so that, I mean, you might have read children's books as a kid, but things have changed and mm -hmm. you have to stay up to date. Um, yeah. And reading books makes you a better writer period. But second piece of advice is to, um, beta read, beta read other, um, um, aspiring writers because if you're able to critique their work it really helps you to critique your own work and to find 
like um, what can make your own work better. That really helped me in my in my uh, journey. Okay, dope. And the last question is, if you could go back in time and give your younger self some writing advice, what advice would that be and what age would you give it to yourself? I would go back to around 15-ish, I think, mm -hmm. um, when I was writing stories from a white girl's point of view mm. and tell myself, you can write a book about yourself, it's fine. She can be black. I, I mean, back then, all I read was, you know, mm -hmm. books from white girl's point of view and it just subconsciously figured that's what books are about and, and that's what people want to read. Um, it took me a while to, to actually find books with black girls. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I would tell my, my younger self to just be more authentic and that you are beautiful and you can write about your experience. People want to read that. Absolutely. I love that advice because, like, written in melanin stemmed from pretty much that advice. Like, I want to see more black girls on the cover. I want to see more stories with black people. And then... I realized, oh, they're out here, but no one's talking about them. So, like, let's change that. Let's see what I can do, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, I, I'm i down for that advice. I support it. And if you happen to stumble across this and you are 13, 14, 15, and you want to be a writer, please write the story that you want to tell. Please do not worry about the fact that if you do not see any stories that look like you or the majority of the books that you have read come across are in your school library do not feature characters that look like you it's fine your story is still valid people will still want to read it and be true to your authentic self and not worry about what you think other people want because other people will adjust okay that's just how mm -hmm. it is <laughs> But that being said, that is all the questions that I have for you. Thank you so much for coming on the channel, for being here, and for anyone who is watching this, if you have made it this far, first of all, buy the book. There's a link in the description box below, okay? No excuses. Second of all, go ahead and tap the like button, you know, because that's free. So I subscribing to the channel and turning on your notifications so you know when the next interview is, or if you want to jump in on Tuesdays when we do the melanin chat, that's also an option. Okay. Also check out the Melanin Library if you want to find um, a description of Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry as well as other books that I have debuted, The 20 Wonders, as I believe they are calling you guys. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's the whole spiel. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you for watching. And until next time, you guys, we hope your days are lovely and your books are interesting. Bye, you guys.